Hey guys, how's it going? It's Chad again. Got a new video for you today showing how to add these LED skins on the bottom and even top of your wall cabinets. The reason I made this is I was looking for an easy way to add these operations on both the bottom and even the grooves on the backside and make it parametric and easily place them on the cabinet. I think I got something that works pretty well, so let's take a look at it and see what you think. So to start, this is a product library. It'll show up in your products, in your libraries, retro LED skins. This is version one. And again, it's set up in frameless wall skins and face frame wall skins. And there's bottom skins and top skins. The main difference is the face frame one is set up to sit behind the bottom rail and top rail. So let's take a quick look here at even what's nice about this. You can see the operations. Because I'm using a finished N as the part type, this works great for face frame cabinets. So let's take a look at some of the parametric features that are included with this library. So first of all, after you download this from the website, copy it, and you're going to paste this in the product libraries in your Mosaic shared files. Right here you can see it. Just go ahead and you'll right click maybe down here and press paste and it'll show up here. Retro LED skins version 1. So it'll come with these parameters here in your other category. LED side setback. Let's just change that to 6 just to see. You see that there. You can see on the, that's only on the finished ends now, so anything that's an unfinished end will continue to stay the way it is. Um, shelf setback, like you can see there, it says distance from front to edge of LED. So you can see there, they move back. And of course you can change these at the product editor level individually. The ditto width, you can make that as wide as you want. Of course you wouldn't do that, but dado depth, pretty straightforward. It's going to adjust how deep your extrusion needs to be. LED 5 millimeter end, yes, we'll get back to that. LED wire, you can see these, all these are wire. So this is going to adjust all your back datoing. So you can see there I have left and right. It's kind of confusing because I'm backwards now, but that's the left side and the right side. So I can control obviously the width and the depth of these. Make it real wide if we want. You can see there we got a big wide slot. Control the depth, whatever we want. The wire setback, now that says that's for on from unfinished end. So on these ones here that are going to the end. If you want to set that back a little bit, maybe you want it to be back an inch, you can pull those back a little bit so you have a solid end. LED wire, yes left and yes right. You don't need to have access probably on both sides of this, but you can if you want. If you don't know which way the wire is going to stub in, I can turn this off. So I'll turn off the left side. You can see here, it's the left side goes off. Turn off the right side. And now I got no back operation. Let's turn those back on. Then of course we have a scribe here. We can add some scribe if we want. Pretty handy. Now I mentioned this five millimeter end. It says drill five millimeter holes at groove ends to square. You know these are not pockets here. These are grooves. A groove you can't add a panel tool group to square this up but I kind of cheated here and we made this square up with a five millimeter bit. So if you have a three eighths down shear cutting out your dados, it's going to leave that three sixteenths radius. But now if you have a five millimeter broad point in there, it's going to only leave a 2.5 millimeter radius, which is almost square looking. So it's a really cool way of just keeping these grooves neat looking. If you want to have them short on the ends, have a finished end. 
Maybe you want this panel to run past and have a visible end on a frameless cabinet or something. And of course you can turn these off. So I can turn that off and now we just have a regular, have the 3 16th radius. Of course it's not showing that, but that's what would happen. So let's look at how to do this. Let's delete this. Sometimes this would be hard to grab. So just go down to your menu here and just grab it. Face frame LED top scan, pull it up. We'll just delete this. Now let's place a couple new ones here. So we're in our, our library. Let's go to products. We're in the face frame section. Let's put on the bottom and the top. So on the bottom, let's do, let's just do finished ends here. Pull that in. We'll just go to the center line for this and we'll just make it inch and a half less than this. So we'll go 64.5. That's in there. Do the same thing for the top. Face frame, LED top skin. This one will do an unfinished end just for the sake of doing it. The way this is set up, it's snapping to the soffit. So what we have to do here is go to the center line or on this cabinet anyways, go to the center line and then we'll just make this the correct size. And you can see there we're, we're good. We're back in place. And there we go. Again, this library is just for anyone that really wants to get some LED panels mounted to their cabinets and do it as simply as possible without noticing it and without seeing it. This is a very minimal look. So how do we get this look? The face frame is pretty clear. It just mounts underneath your, your bottom rail. The frameless requires a little bit more thought. So again, it's not difficult. A couple of adjustments. Let's delete this one. Just add these couple in there. So on this, let's do let's do a frameless finished end. And again, the bottom, the way this is set up in 3D, it's a little bit strange, but if you see the elevation, it's coming in at 53 and a quarter. These cabinets are 54 but it's snapping to the bottom of these cabinets. This works good this way because you can adjust it out front and the 3D position has been modified. All you have to do is set up your bottom interior scribe to the thickness of your finished end. Let's go to our settings. Let's go to our materials. And our cabinet material template is right here. And what I'm using is I'm using a finished end material for these skins. And so here's my thickness for this, this template. I'm using a one side poplar, one side mel, and it's 0.76. So, so if I go into my products here and I go into my, my skins, let's look at it here, go to the parts. And you can see there, is pulling up that white one side poplar paint grade. And it's a finished end. So what's nice about making a finished end is I can select high detail. So that's really nice to be able to see these parts and actually see the operations. If this was set up as a panelized end material, by default, you can't turn on high detail. And I think there is a workaround for that, but let's leave it at that. So here we are. This is dropped in, snapping to the bottom of these cabinets. And I, it, it looks like it's underneath the cabinet, but it isn't. It's actually locking in flush. So let's take a look at it. It's locking in perfectly flush there because I set these up with my parameter of 0.7, negative 0 0.76. Let's just make this, let's just make this, uh, negative 0.72 just so you get an idea 
So if I had a thinner material here, I would adjust that scribe accordingly. You can see that there. The front stays the same. So if you're just adding a bottom panel to a wall cabinet, adjust the bottom interior scribe, approximately negative three quarter for three quarter stock, but ideally adjust it to your negative finished end thickness. The other thing is you want to do is have a long bottom wall checked yes. For that, I went to my job parameters, go to ends, long bottom wall, I see I have that checked yes. So if I turn that off, we'll see what happens here. You see how all those ends will drop down through, which is a no bueno. Do the same for the top. If you want to have the top panel, top scribe wall is needed to be adjusted. I did that over here in my scribes. Top scribe wall, 0.76. This can all be done in one specific cabinet too at the product editor, so adjust back top scribe. Now this is only if you're using a plant on back, so here I have a case depth back. I don't have to worry about that. The other option here is to, instead of running the long top and bottom, I could adjust these at the shape tab. So this may become parametric at some point, but right now it's not. So I can adjust my top edge. Let's take a look at that. There you go. You can see how that works. Let's add that top one here. Frameless top, unfinished ends. Let's say you want to eliminate this operation there because you don't need to do that. Let's go into that panel and turn that off. Edit, parameters. We'll just pull these all in so you get an idea. Hold shift. Now this is going to be the left side we're going to turn off there. So on off. There you go. Another thing I want to make a point of sharing is these ones here that have unfinished ends that run all the way through have data logic applied. These ones here do not. So these ends are going to come up exactly at three inches or two inches or one inch or whatever you want your setback to be the same as the front. So the front setback is three, the side would be three as well. So that's how that works. Again, another cool thing I want to mention is this is not a SketchUp file. So if you go to this, this is the bottom skin, finished ends. This one's going to snap under the wall cabinet. And if you look here, it says we're not, we're not checking this box. So we're just using the part. So what's really nice about that is SketchUp files are great for certain things, but this keeps it much more accurate to exactly how it's going to look. Let's just do a real quick one to show you how you would make one of these just from scratch. These are in my frameless V10 library. And if you go to my room settings, I don't have any V12. So let's pull a different library once with different parameters. Let's bring in a new cabinet. Let's bring in a, a pair of doors. You can see that's your standard standard layout there. So now for this one, let's make a couple changes. We'll adjust our bottom interior scribe. To 0.76 negative. So I want to show you what happens here if you just place these parts now before adjusting stuff. You see what's going on there? Let's make these ends unfinished. Take a look at it again. Now let's go to our frameless V12 job parameters. 
Let's go to our scribes. Adjust long bottom wall, yes. Long bottom wall. That's all you got to do for this kind of cabinet for a bottom. You can see what's happening here. You're doubling up the panel. And I could just copy this if I wanted to and, and just paste a couple more of these. Top, same thing. Let's do the top. We'll just do one cabinet. So this will be adjust back top scribe wall. 0.76. So you can see what's going on there is that's not really what we want yet. So we still have to do the top scribe wall. Same thing. 0.76. That brings that down. Last thing we want to do then is just make our ends correct. Long top wall, yes. There we go. So you can see if that was case depth, probably would look better. But all I have to do now is I could just copy this, paste it, paste it. Then when I place my top on here, it'll be flush. Super excited about this. It's so easy to add this stuff and show your LED lighting now. Check the video description for the download. Until next time, thank you. See you later.